Good morning. Good morning. First, I want to start off by telling you about my first mission trip. In February of 2016, my mom, brother, and I traveled with a group from the church to Glendora, Mississippi. Going into the trip, we had no clue what we would, what we would be doing for the next eight days. Upon arriving, we learned we would be assisting in the building of a house. This house was being built for a woman and her two children who were left homeless after the house burned to the ground. We ended up tiling the floors of the house for the majority of the time we were there. On this trip, I learned that the love and support found in our church not only reaches our local community, but stretches to distant communities as well. This love and support has inspired me to pursue a career that will enable me to help people in many different ways. In January of 2018, I will be attending Highlands Canine Training to receive certifications in specialized dog training. There, I will learn to train police dogs, service dogs, search and rescue dogs, and behavior and modification training. Upon completing the course, I am going to focus on training service dogs. Service dogs are no longer defined as only useful for the blind, but they are now used for a wide variety of both physical and mental illnesses. They can be used for people of all ages and all backgrounds. I chose this career after I wrote a paper on the benefits dogs have brought to people, specifically veterans who suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder. The dog not only reduces the use of drugs, but provides benefits and security that medi medications cannot. I also look forward to working closely with children. By allowing children with disabilities to receive a service dog, it gives them confidence to go out and conquer the world. A passage from Matthew 15, 29 states, Jesus left there and went along the Sea of Galilee. Then he went up on a mountainside and sat down. Great crowds came to him, bringing the lame, the blind, the crippled, the mute, and many others. They laid him at, the, at his feet, and he healed them. The people were amazed when they saw the mute speaking, the crippled made well, the lame walking, and the blind singing, singing and they praised God. Now I, will be able to, I won't be able to work miracles like Jesus, but I hope to change the lives of many people who have disabilities and give their families peace of mind. While this chapter in my life is ending, I know that the book is far from over. I know that wherever life takes me, I will be able to depend on my faith in God. I know that I will always be able to return to the, my family at the Church on the Cape. Thank you, Jane. Good morning. Good morning. That might be hard to beat. <laughs> my name is Kyle Lemons, and I have attended the Church on the Cape for all my life. Starting out in the nursery with Miss Williamson, and then attending Sunday school. Growing up in this church, <clears throat> I have been able to build many different friendships with the people of the church. One person at the Church on the Cape who has made a huge influence in my life is David Emery. David became my friend and buddy early on. He first taught me how to sail since we both have a passion for the sea. Often he, Judy, and I would enjoy a picnic on Goat Island and Judy would always bring her delicious homemade cookies. When it came time to start confirmation, there was no doubt that I would ask Dave to be my mentor. He would never hesitate to help me when in need, and most recently wrote a letter of recommendation for his scholarship applications. Confirmation was a very rewarding and fun time. We had class with Pastor Ruth. She was always happy to see us and enthusiastic to teach us about the Lord. My two favorite memories from confirmation were taking a trip to Salem, Maine, and volunteering at the Bon Appetit Food Shelter in Biddeford. I enjoyed Salem because we were able to learn about Maine and the importance of the town. Bon Appetit was a great experience because I got to help people who were unable to have three meals a day. Doing community service like that made me realize how fortunate we are and that if people are in need, never hesitate to lend a hand. My first mission trip with Church on the Cape 
Outside of Maine was in February of 2016. We went to Glendora, Mississippi. This town needed a lot of help, having a small population of just over 200, mostly at poverty level or below. Our job was to tile the floors for a newly constructed house, which was being built for a woman and her two sons whose home had burned. We spent the majority of the week on our knees doing this project. Doing this trip with the church for a town much less fortunate than ours inspired me to do more volunteering in our community. Just recently, I spent the last two weeks of my senior year volunteering at the Kennebunkport Conservation Trust. My senior project required me to do a total of 45 hours of service. We took part in building footbridges for the trail systems, cutting invasive brush, helping with elementary school field trips, and filming the trails for Google Street View. We took photos of the trails so that people who cannot access them physically anymore can walk them virtually. The trust plans to take our project to Atria and show the residents the trails. The entire two weeks were very rewarding and I met so many great people who worked to make our town a better place. When I'm on the ocean lobstering, I can see the church steeple. It is a guide and affirmation that I am home. I know that no matter where I end up, I can always come back to the church on the Cape. A child was told to write a book report on the entire Bible. It's way too easy to take it for granted that children understand what's being taught to them. So here's the Bible in a nutshell. In the beginning, which occurred near the start, there was nothing but God, darkness, and some gas. The Bible said, the Lord thy God is one, but I think he must be a lot older than that. <laughs> anyway, God said, give me a light, and someone did. Then God made the world. He split the Adam and made Eve. <laughs> Adam and Eve were naked, but they weren't embarrassed because mirrors hadn't been invented yet. Adam and Eve disobeyed God by eating one bad apple. So they were driven from the Garden of Eden. Not sure what they were driven in, though, because they didn't yet have cars. Adam and Eve had one son, Cain, who hated his brother as long as he was able. <laughs> Pretty soon, all of the early people died off, except for Methuselah, who lived to be like a million or something. One of the next important people was Noah, who was a good guy but one of his kids was kind of a ham. <laughs> Noah built a large boat and put his family and some anal animals on it. He asked some other people to join him, but they said they'd have to take a rain check. <laughs> After Noah came Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob was more famous than his brother Esau because Esau sold Jacob his birthmark in exchange for some pot roast. Jacob had a son named Joseph who wore a really loud sports coat. <laughs> Another important Bible guy is Moses, whose real name was Charlton Heston. <laughs> Moses led the Israelites, that's Israelites, out of Egypt and away from the evil Pharaoh after God sent 10 plagues on Pharaoh's people. These plagues included frogs, mice, lice, bowels, and no cable. <laughs> God fed the Israelites every day with manicotti. <laughs> then he gave them his top 10 commandments. These include don't lie, cheat, smoke, dance, or covet your neighbor's stuff. Oh, oh yeah, I just thought of one more. Humor thy father and thy mother. <laughs> one of Moses' best helpers was Joshua, who was the first Bible guy to use spies. Joshua fought the Battle of Jericho, <laughs> and the fence fell over on the town. After Joshua came David. He got to be king by killing a giant with a slingshot. He had a son named Solomon who had about 300 wives and 500 porcupines. <laughs> My teacher says he was wise, but that doesn't sound very wise to me. After Solomon, there were a bunch of major league prophets. 
One of these was Jonah, who was swallowed by a big whale and then barfed up on the shore. <laughs> there were also some minor league prophets, but I guess we don't have to worry about them. After the Old Testament came the New Testament. Jesus is the star of the New Testament. He was born in Bethlehem in a barn. I wish I'd been born in a barn too, because my mom is always saying to me, close the door, were you born in a barn? <laughs> it would be nice to say, as a matter of fact, I was. During his life, Jesus had many arguments with sinners like the Pharisees and the Republicans. <laughs> Jesus also had 12 opossums. The worst one was Judas Asparagus. <laughs> Judas was so evil, they named a terrible vegetable after him. Jesus was a great man. He healed many leopards and even preached to some Germans on the Mount. But the Republicans and all those guys put Jesus on trial before Pontius the Pilate. The Pilate didn't stick up for Jesus, he just washed his hands instead. Anyways, Jesus died for our sins, then came back to life again. He went up to heaven, but will be back at the end of the aluminum. His return is foretold in the book of Revolution. Thanks be to God.